Hey everybody, this is Rob with Treehouse Recovery and I'm back again. And today I wanna to teach you guys about anhedonia. One of the major reasons or a big reason why people relapse, especially in early recovery, is because of anhedonia or a lack of knowledge of anhedonia. And the best way I can describe anhedonia, and by no means is this a clinical term, but the best way I can describe it is a state of blah, okay? It's a current dissatisfaction with sobriety or somebody's current reality, which is gonna be sobriety, okay? And it consists of two primary factors. The first is gonna be biochemical, and the second is gonna be psychological. So first, let's focus on the biochemical. When somebody ingest drugs or alcohol, they release dopamine into the brain. And this continues over a period of time, for years sometimes. And every time they put a drug in their body, dopamine is released in the brain. And what eventually happens is the brain says, that's it, I'm done. I don't need to produce this naturally anymore. Now dopamine, if you refer back to my pause video, is responsible for a lot of things. It's responsible for a, a reward that keeps us safe and alive and keeps us moving forward as individuals or as just a society in general. And if we don't have dopamine or a natural production of dopamine, well, we're gonna feel that blah feeling, okay? So when somebody enters a recovery center or any kind of treatment environment and they are no longer having a chemically altered amount of dopamine going off in their brain throughout the day whenever they put the drug in their body and what will happen is if somebody goes through everyday activities during that initial phase of sobriety they're just not going to feel very good they're not going to feel that reward so that's the biochemical reasons of why somebody's going to feel anhedonia the second thing that we need to discuss when really understanding anhedonia is the psychological effects that somebody's going to be experiencing while in early sobriety. So to really understand that, let's take a look at somebody while they're in active addiction. This is usually a pretty exciting lifestyle. Now it's negative excitement, a majority of it, but excitement nonetheless. Um, so this is somebody who might be uh, participating in illegal activity, stealing. This is somebody who's probably putting themselves in pretty dangerous situations. Uh, maybe dealing with some pretty shady people or running from the police or maybe even just the uh, excitement provided from uh, being dishonest to the people around them, trying to hide their stash or, or just get away with the substance use or anything involved in the substance use. So what all of these behaviors do is, it, well, it gets the heart beating, okay? And it can um, start to produce adrenaline and all of these behaviors will create that excitement. Now, let's talk about that individual when they decide to go into treatment. Well, they're not gonna be receiving that same kind of excitement. Um, and what this can do is lead to a comparison to where, yes, I understand those were negative behaviors, but the way I interpreted it while I was in active addiction was this is very exciting. And now that I'm in treatment, I have a schedule, I have a routine, and I'm not receiving that same kind of adrenaline pumping excitement that I'm used to, all right? So this can often lead to other psychological setup behaviors. Somebody can now awfulize sobriety or even romanticize the past using. So with the biochemical and the psychological effects, somebody will have that anhedonia. Now, anhedonia, can be consistent during somebody's process, at least the initial phase. It can also spike during different months of their process. Uh, it can also get elevated during um, activities that maybe somebody has a relationship with. For example, if somebody grew up surfing and they love surfing, every time they go out surfing, they get that dopamine reward. Well, if that same individual later on in life decides to get sober, and they go out and they go surfing, well, there's a good chance they're not gonna get the same reward that they're used to due to that dopamine deficit. This can easily lead somebody to going and awfulizing their sobriety or even hyper-focusing on things from their past that would produce that dopamine, for example, substance use, all right? And this is a major reason why we see people relapse. This is why I'm so confident in the treehouse approach to treatment. We got guys waking up at the crack of dawn, going out to the ocean, and experiencing 
that joy, that excitement, getting the heart beating, getting the adrenaline going, as they're out there, they're riding the waves. And we're doing this all in a structured and controlled environment, but still creating a new relationship with that excitement that for a lot of people who have the disease, very much crave. And then from the beach, they're going into the gym and they're participating in tense workouts. And when they're doing that, what that's gonna do is kickstart that natural dopamine production. We have the ability to assist somebody through that initial phase without the use of any kind of, any kind of medications, anything that's actually gonna do more harm than good. So ultimately what's gonna happen is we can help somebody get through that initial phase of, uh, of anhedonia. And then on our clinical side, our guys are gonna filter into the office. They're gonna get lessons from guys like me or the other IRT team, and they're gonna learn about anhedonia. They're gonna learn in real time how to use coping skills. All of this works together. While anhedonia is gonna act as a one-two punch as far as the biochemical factors, the psychological factors, well, we got the same kind of recipe combating that. We got the physical and we got the mental, all right? The problem that we often see is people making permanent or life-threatening decisions based on temporary uncomfortability. And that's why people will relapse from anhedonia. All right. So if somebody's able to come into our environment and we're, they're given the opportunity to promote brain healing along with all the knowledge of why they're feeling a certain way, that sets somebody up for opportunity and the ability to maintain long-term sustainable sobriety. This is Rob, again, with Treehouse Recovery. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Also, check out the links below. There's a lot of good stuff down there, and I'll see you guys next time.